Hello everybody and welcome back to the Flutter tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on with our uh, project that we created in the last video and we'll be exploring a little bit of this main.dart file over here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and run it just to see what we have. This looks uh, working. This looks working, there you go. Um, okay, uh, so um, right now we just have our um, screen and you just press the button and it, and it changes the number here. Alright, so uh, on the left here we have our project explorer. Um, in this lib folder we have our main.dart file and that's where the compiler starts. It starts at main.dart um, and that, there's no getting around that um, that I know of right now, uh, so we'll just leave it as main.dart. Uh, another file you should be aware of is this pubsec.yaml. Uh, uh, this is where you this is where you can control your uh, extra packages. So if you wanted to um, add a, an extra package that will allow us to to have like libraries or network connections stuff like that, we have to add, we would have to add it over here. Um, all right. Apart from that, let's go back into. Let me just move this. Ooh, uh, here we go. Let me just move this over here. Um, in main.dart, so this is our main method, and it's just where you run the code, um, and it just calls a single thing, run app, uh, and it passes in uh, something, a class that extends something called a stateless widget. Um, so everything in Flutter, everything in all mobile apps is widgets, and uh, every time you open a screen, uh, the compiler on the phone will render each widget separately. Uh, if it's a stateless widget, that means that it's the widget will be the same no matter what. Now that doesn't mean that the children of this widget will be will be always the same. Uh, so, for example, right here, uh, a child of this stateless widget uh, is a stateful widget. Um, so stuff like that. Um, apart from that, um, so this stateless widget is our base app, uh, and we just call it my app, or the project calls it my app just for now. Um, it overrides a build method that returns a material app, uh, and this essentially is just our material app, um, and it has a title, a theme, and home, which it specifies as this widget, my home page, uh, and it passes in a title to um, the uh, constructor of my home page. Um, so, like I said, my home page is a stateful widget, that means that every time it renders, it might be different. And there could be times in this class where we call set state, like we did in uh, React, uh, and that will tell the compiler to re-render this component with the updated state. Um, and in Flutter, uh, state is a separate class. Um, so essentially, in the widget, uh, you're going to override a method that calls create state, and then create state will uh, uh, will return a different a, a different class that is extends state of the widget, so it's kind of circular. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. And stateless widget will or stateful widget will also override build and stuff like that. Okay, so to start off, let's go ahead and delete everything in main.dart, and we have to do our import. So import package col uh, colon flutter uh, slash material dot dart. It just imports all the uh, Flutter widgets and stuff like that. Um, let's go ahead and create our app. Uh, so our app class. We're going to say class app extends stateless widget. And in stateless widget, all it's going to have is just our widget build. So at override, and we're going to say widget build, and it's going to take in a build context parameter. And all this is going to do is return a material app. And we'll leave that blank for now. So you might notice that Flutter kind of takes on the syntax of JSON. Uh, there's a lot of uh, keys and values, essentially, uh, especially for the constructors. So, uh, for example, the title of this app will be, um, we'll call it just YouTube Tutorial. Um, and then we're going to have a style, which we'll do, uh, talk about later. Uh, we'll talk about our home. So when we specify home, we're going to 
passing a widget, we'll leave that blank for now. Um, it's going to give us a bunch of errors. Um, now to actually tell the compiler to use this as our main app, like I said, you have to uh, do the main method. So void main, no parameters, and that just uh, goes to run app as it's going to pass in the constructor of app, so an instance of app. Um, so now let's go ahead and create our home widget. So we're going to say class uh, home page extends stateless oh, stateless widget. Uh, it's going to add override. That's a bit like Java. And it's going to return widget and build. Build context context. And this is going to return a scaffold. Oops. Oh, where do I think go? A scaffold, which is like it says a scaffold, and it's just a structure that you'll be using pretty often for each page. So in a scaffold, uh, these are pretty useful because you can have a bunch of things like an app bar, which will just be an app bar. That's an element. Um, and an app bar, you can have a bunch of things itself. Uh, so we're nesting essentially. We're going to go, we're going to specify a title, which will be a text element. And in the text, we'll just pass in YouTube Flutter. Just like that. And notice that I'm putting commas after everything. Uh, that's just standard in Flutter, uh, so the formatter will format everything properly. Um, even for the last parameter, you might want to put a comma after, just because it looks nice and you won't have to worry about mess um, about missing a comma. Um, so you can also have a bunch of other things in app bar. You can have like a navigator, which we'll look at in another video. Um, and then in the scaffold, we'll also have a body. And for the body, we'll just have a uh, center for now, and in center, uh, we will just have a child of a column. Um, and column uh, will have a uh, widgets, or children, sorry, children, and that will be a widget array. So uh, the array denoted by the square brackets, that's pretty standard, and then the widget, the type of the array, is in these triangle brackets here. And then we'll just have a single, uh, child that just says text um, and we'll just pass in uh, hello flutter and I'm putting a comma after that um, I got all my commas down and you see that in Visual Studio code uh, it will put a comment after each completion of an element that's pretty useful um, so yeah let's go ahead and we actually have to specify another thing first um, in material app we have to specify home as uh, an instance of home page. All right, so let's, okay. We got an error, uh, missing static target. I think app is a reserved name, so you have to do my app. Let's, let's see if that works out. Yeah, there you go. So app is a reserved name because it's, a, it's actually a thing. Like app is a widget, um, so we, that's why it got confused. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah, so that's essentially Hello Flutter there. A um, couple other things about Dart, um, apart from the syntax and stuff, um, to make a private function or private element, uh, all you would have to do is just say a const, or if we wanted to make like a a private thing, a private function, you would just say void, and then the underscore in front of it, and then print. And then what we can do is just say print, which is another thing, uh, pressed, just like that. And then we can attach something to this. So let's go down into the scaffold and we can say a floating action button uh, will be a floating action button. And uh, the child will be, or is it child? Uh, yeah, child will be an icon and we'll just pass an icons dot print yeah that's all uh, just like that comma and then the floating action button will also have a another thing a callback on pressed and we'll just say uh, print just like that and this is just a callback so we don't actually put the parentheses in there all right so we can save that you see that it gets the button over here if we press that, it'll print it down here, pressed, just like we told it to. 
So yeah, that's a private method, so nothing else can access this. I can't call something like home page dot print because it's a private thing. So that's something you cannot do. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the main dot dart basic stuff. Um, in the next video, we'll look at styling, and after that, I guess uh, we'll look into uh, navigating between pages, and then we can get into actually exploring a lot more of the Flutter library. Um, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.